This is Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth, welcoming a first-timer to the program. She came up in this thing, I mean, just looking like she just stepped off the runway, like legit. She is incredibly fly. She is a fashion stylist and the CEO of So Kate Boutique. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shauna Campbell to the program. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so you are the owner of So Kate Boutique, and you're also a fashion stylist. So uh, where did your love of fashion, uh, when, when did you know that you were into clothes and, and, and how things looked on people? Um, I would say from a little girl, you know, third grade, uh-huh. always getting compliments from one of my teachers. Um, she always gave me compliments every day, and my mom always dressed me so cute, and it just kind of stuck with me, and I like, you know, being pretty and glamorous. And so you get it from your mom. Yeah, from yeah, my yeah, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your mom started that. That is yes. so nice. And, I mean, you are also an entrepreneur because you have your own boutique. So, Kate Boutique, let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, what kind of clothes are there? So we have some very uh, trendy clothes, all sizes, size zero to three X. And we also do personal shopping and personal styling. So we're a one-stop shop. Whatever we don't have, we can get it for you if you have special events to attend. Indeed. And I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, special events because uh, you have a special event that is coming up this Saturday, July 21st. It's the Influencers and Fashion Brunch that is going to benefit real women, real beauty. I mean, real beauty, real women. Uh Uh, Did I say? Yeah. Real beauty, real women. Shout out to uh, Jacqueline and Anika. Uh, What's up, ladies? They were supposed to be here, but uh, they had some other things going on. So uh, Shauna is here as well. So this is going to be a pretty big deal on um, Saturday. Can you uh, talk about the event a little bit and what people should expect? Yes. So it's an influencer and fashion brunch. So we're going to have a panelist of influencers and all of the ladies they're not only uh, into fashion but they're also entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. we have Hattie Williams she is a uh, key influencer in Houston she does lots of events in philanthropy and um, she spreads a lot of wisdom to people who are coming up after her and we also have Tamara Bradshaw of Brookwine uh, addiction. It's a really fun um, Jamaican inspired fitness class. And so um, it's pretty fun. They do a lot of uh, Jamaican inspired uh, fitness workouts. So you're having fun learning dances and working out as well. We also have um, Lonnie Carey. And um, she goes by I am Lonnie. She's a beauty blogger and content curator. Mm -hmm. She um, helps small businesses to grow. Um, If you're in the fashion industry and you have a boutique or something regarding beauty, uh, you can send her your products and she uh, will review them and wear them and help your business to grow. You'll start seeing some sales coming in. She's really awesome. And then we have Ronchelle Bob of Pop Culture in a Shell. She is a fashion and entertainment blogger. So uh, she blogs about uh, what all of the entertainers and celebrities are wearing. And so she has a platform where you can also showcase your business and get your uh, products seen by a a large, large uh, following. And then we have uh, Chica Ukazor. She is a new age beauty on Instagram or I'm sorry, new age Nigerian on Instagram. And she's also a fashion blogger and she's international here in the U.S., also in the U.K. So she goes back and forth so you can get some international exposure with her. And um, you're doing I mean, that that's great. I'm really impressed that you remembered all of these people's <laughs> and their handles without any notes. So that's uh, beyond impressive that you <laughs> know by heart your entire panel thank you and we have one more um her name is lillian henny she is also a uh, well she's a former blogger she's an attorney by day and she's a fashion blogger former fashion blogger by night and um what she does is uh shows you how to have great fashion in mm-hmm. corporate america so uh 
check her out. Her name is She's So Overdressed on Instagram. Wow. So an attorney by day and then she moonlights as a fashion blogger by night. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? How awesome. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Shauna Campbell, who is a fashion stylist and the CEO of So Kate Boutique. The Influencers and Fashion Brunch is happening this Saturday from 12 noon until 4 at the District Art Gallery. That's 810 Richie Street here in Houston, as you just heard. Uh, Shauna gave a uh, whole list of the, the, the entire panel that is going to be there. And this is going to benefit real beauty, real women. Um, since you are involved with uh, Jacqueline and Anika, can you uh, tell us a bit about real beauty, real women and what they do? Because they do so much from uh, s- uh, bringing social awareness to things that are going on in the world uh, to just empowering women and and, uh, and and bigging them up. I mean, they do so much, but uh, can you speak speak to their... Uh, yes, so Jacqueline and Annika, they're so um, supportive. They're some awesome women, and they are just always willing to help. But more about um, the Real Beauty, Real Women organization. Um, so what they say is it's where... Beauty, glamour, and entertainment meet social responsibility for the socially conscious fashionista and making activism sexy. So um, they talk about some real, you know, important issues on their radio show, but they also include fashion. So there is a platform where you can, um, you know, be educated about what's going on in the world and throw some fashion in there. So, you know, Women love to be beautiful and glamorous, so that's where, um, you know, activism meets fashion. What was it about them that made you want to be involved with them and um, help them out? Was there was there a, a particular, I don't know, issue that they were taking up that you cared about where you were like, yeah, you're right, let me get behind them? Well, they had me on their radio show, which was awesome, about maybe two weeks ago. So I met some really cool ladies who were talking about some great uh um, issues, um, autism being one of them. And so that stuck out to me, but also I'm a part of their, uh, social graces, social club organization, Mm -hmm. and they do a lot in the community and they collaborate with a lot of other entrepreneurs and organizations here in Houston. So they have a really large platform. So, you know, I like to help people and I saw that they like helping people as well. So I thought it was a great organization to join and to get other ladies to join as well. Indeed, that's that's dope. And uh, they are just like angels sent from above. The yes. the things that they are trying to bring to the forefront that is happening right here in Houston. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned so much from those ladies. So uh, shout out to uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline and uh, Aniko or Annika. I'm sorry. I uh, You know I love you, though. Uh, well, I call her both. Anika... Annika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so they should dress probably um, very chic. I mm-hmm. would um, imagine for the influencers and fashion brunch. Well, it is a fashion brunch, so yes. bring the fashion. Uh huh. Uh huh. What um What is your favorite um, fashion trend of summer eighteen? Well, I definitely like all of the patterns and um, the colors. I love colors. I'm not afraid of colors. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, they like the basics, Mm -hmm. but I'm not afraid of color. I like for things to pop and I really like dressing to go on vacation. So instead of just dressing really nice and wearing exotic things for vacation, you know, you can do that all summer or you know, all seasons. So, yeah. so what's the um? And this is for my own personal uh, use. What, what what's the trend for this fall and in, in, in spring? What is going to be the thing for this fall and so spring? So this, I can be ahead. Yes. Yeah, so for this fall, the color is going to be a fuchsia pink. Um, as far as uh, I saw a pink shirt that I was going to yeah. buy a polo pink shirt at Zara that had the terry cloth. There was a polo terry go back pink and get it. at Zara. Like yes. it was pink. Uh-huh. Like I was like, yo, season. I might get that, you know, <laughs> October breast cancer awareness. But you saying that that's the color for yes. the fall. And what... Fuchsia, pink. Also, that's um, so odd because you get more earth tones uh-huh. in the fall and they want to pop it out like it's spring. Yes. And the patterns are going to be like. Aztec and the Western feel and also um, 
really cool power suits. Uh, that's a thing for the fall power season. suits. Now, yes. how would you explain so if power you're a lady, suits. you know, and you want to wear a suit, but you're going to work, it's not only for uh, corporate America. You can and make those suits look very out. sexy. Can... So if you have like skirts and blazers or slacks and blazers, oh, okay. you can get the really cool patterns and colors for the season. So that's what's happening this fall. All right. Well, cool. Well, uh, thank you for putting me up on game so I can be ahead. I <laughs> Anytime. Guess my, I was. Uh, I guess I, I, I inadvertently I I was on trend because I saw that shirt and I was like you know what uh -huh. you know I'm gonna come back and get it because I know with this sale it's gonna be ten dollars less uh, next week. Yeah, Zara because they got their sale going on. I don't mean to I endorse love Zara. Them, but yeah, oh my god, closet full. This, this Zara, uh, Shauna Campbell, the fashion stylist, also oh fly she is, and CEO of So Kate Boutique. I will see you Saturday for the influencers and fashion brunch. From 12 until 4 at District Art Gallery, that's 810 Ritchie Street here in Houston. And for more information, they can go to? You can go to my website, uh, www.iamsokate.net, or on Instagram, it's at iamsokate, where you can click the link in the bio and purchase your tickets, or you can go over to Facebook and put in Influencer and Fashion Brunch. There's a link to purchase your tickets there, or you can go straight to Eventbrite and put in Influencer and Fashion Brunch, and you can purchase all of your tickets. General admission tickets will also be sold at the door. If anybody decides to come at the last minute, we'll still love to have you. Indeed. Shauna Campbell, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Welcome in a first timer to the program. He is an author and uh, the founder of a nonprofit, Mr. A.D. Burks. How you doing, man? Great, and you? I'm doing well. So um, you have a, a book that is called The Four Steps, A Practical Guide to Breaking the Addictive Cycle. Yes. So, uh, well, before we get into that, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a native Houstonian, grew mm -hmm. up in Missouri City, uh, went to the high school City. for health professions, graduated top of the class, then went over to Cornell College in Iowa and became a chemistry major. Oh, wow. Started pursuing music and then came back to Houston, got an MBA at Rice uh -huh. and uh, do, do real estate and other little things like that. Oh, okay. So uh, what, the book that yes. you have, the, the four... Steps guide, and I understand that this is a, a journey that, like, this is from your personal life. Some some things that were going on, and you documented it, and now you have a book, and and explaining how you got to where you got to. Right. So uh, tell us about it. So the first book I wrote was a memoir on sex addiction. Okay. And from that, I included the four steps, just a sort of snippet talking about how I was able to break my addictive cycle. Well, more people were asking, well, I need that same process. So I then created the four steps guide which goes through each step i give commentary and it's actually a workbook so you can work each step yourself hmm okay so you mentioned you said sex addiction yes my friends and i we always have this debate about sex addiction mm -hmm. um some are explaining to me like it's it is real because at first i i didn't believe in it i'm like well what constitutes one who has a sex addiction like if i like to have sex a lot and i just need to you know release every day like <laughs> is that addiction and then you know a female friend of mine you know had to break it down she was like when it takes over your life like when you can't do what you normally do because you're too busy stuck in the house you know getting yourself off or doing whatever then that is addiction because it, it it reminded me of when Halle Berry and Eric Benet got right. divorced and then they labeled him a sex addict a sex addict right. because I mean he just wanted to have sex with his wife she probably wasn't giving it up enough and I was just like well what constitutes a sex addiction like isn't it, is is it a so different let's, let's definition first, yeah so let's or first different? define the word addiction okay. so how I define addiction is any substance or behavior a person utilizes to escape pain Okay. So when you put the word sex in front of it, an individual is using sex to escape pain. So it goes back into the definition of, okay, what's the intent behind the usage? So if you're using it to escape pain, I then define it as an addiction. Ah, uh, got it. And that's the problem because, you know, my mom's a licensed professional counselor. So people 
want to use the DMS-5 to determine what constitutes addictions or not, and then they have these criteria. But when you look at it from sort of a layman's term, is the person using the substance or behavior to escape pain? And at that point, are they using it on a consistent basis? Then you get addictions. And that's why you look at our society in general. Mm -hmm. So many people have addictions which haven't been diagnosed. And just this week, they diagnosed gaming as an official, an unofficial addiction. So mm. if you can go that simple, am I utilizing this substance or this behavior to escape pain? Then I become an addict. Ah, and gotcha. it's such a negative connotation with the word addict. Right. But if you can say addiction equals pain, then I think we all can say, okay, well, all of us experience pain. Right. Now I don't I have a stigma, stigma associated yeah. with addiction. Oh, that's brilliant. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm talking to A.D. Burks, uh, author of The Four Steps, A Practical Guide to Breaking the Addictive Cycle. So how many Americans or Houstonians are affected by uh, addiction? So some stats I compiled when I was in the process of writing a proposal for this book. 42.1 million Americans are estimated as smokers. 23.5 as alcoholics and drug addicts, 9 million as sex addicts, and 6.5 as gambling addicts. Now, if you look at compulsive shopping, it goes up to 20 million. Mm. But what they really haven't, to me, outlined is addiction to food and sugar. 70% mm. of Americans are overweight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once again, that's why I put a broad definition on addiction so people can realize and say, well, is this behavior a substance I'm doing? Am I using it to really escape pain? This has become an addiction for me. Yeah. I need to get it under check. So, so, you know, so saying that, AD, so now I'm thinking there are some people in my life who are addicted to certain things. Mm -hmm. Now that you have broken it down like that, like uh, food, for example. Yes. I mean, I had a friend, like, she turns to food when she's feeling bad. Mm -hmm. I want to eat. I mean, there's been plenty of times where we've had conversation. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm, time to eat a, a pint of ice cream. Like, right. what? is going on exactly and so if we can sort of reframe the definition of addiction and get our minds wrapped around what's actually occurring mm -hmm. then we can actually put a stop to it because you just said she was feeling bad instead of really addressing what was causing her to feel bad or what i could say the root cause mm -hmm. once we can get to the root cause there's no need for addiction so you see these celebrities that continually go in back and back to rehab right well what's happening they're not getting to the root cause of their pain right and normally it's normally it's something uh, traumatic that has either happened in your childhood yes. or adolescence that you carry with you into your young adult and adulthood. Right. And, and that trauma was scare, scary about trauma is we put so many layers on top of things that you have to get to the real root takes a while. Yeah. And so for me personally, my trauma had to deal with accepting who I was and people pleasing my mom because she had sacrificed so much. I'm an only child. Mm. All the things and opportunities I were given because of her sacrifice. But at the same time, I had to realize me trying to people please her was then causing me to be addicted to sex mm. because I needed to escape from that pain of trying to people please. Of trying to people. Oh, wow. I, see, now you, you're in my head. I was just about to ask <laughs> what led to that. Uh, you just answered it for me. So I'm sure that type of pressure um, was pretty heavy on you. Oh, yeah, because, you know, I was so blessed at the age of 14. I'm going to Russia with people to people, student ambassadors. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm traveling the world. It's a good student. Yeah, I put in the work, but it was her sacrificing as a single parent and allowing me to have all these opportunities. So in essence, I felt like, you know, I have to perform, be that perfect person in her eyes and then her friend's eyes, you know, to sort of give back to what she's sacrificed, mm -hmm. but you can't do that. And, and I, that was my story. Other people do it for other reasons, you know, and you have to really understand, which is step three. I don't want to jump and storm the, ste the steps, but step three is, you know, understanding your environment and what constitutes, because what you consider normal and what I consider as normal is different because of the households we grew up in. Right. But you know, what considers constitutes abuse, mm -hmm. you know, psychologically we can define that and realize a lot of people have been abused as children sexually mentally physically emotionally and they carry that on a day-to-day -day basis and that mm -hmm. pain manifests itself through different experiences yeah, with right. others oh yeah 
You listen to Access Houston, talk to author A.D. Burks, The Four Steps, The Practical Guide to Breaking the Addictive Cycle. Um, as much as you are willing um, to share, when it came to your addiction, mm-hmm. uh, was there anything specific like you just needed to do it just so you could feel better? Or what was it? Pornography? Was it just, you know, random sex? <laughs> uh, I mean, you. I mean, as much as you want to share, no, no. I'm just trying well, to... to be honest, the, the full version of everything that happens is I wrote it in Sex and Surrender. Oh, it's in, the, it's in the book. So, yeah, we gotta you get can, the yeah, book. You can read the first chapter online at sexsurrender.com and okay. hit the book tab and it gives you all of that information. But to give you, I guess, a snippet of what happened, sure. I would act out sexually when I felt so much pressure and I couldn't get it because I was having to live double lives, mm-hmm. trying to be who I wasn't versus who I was. And, you know, thinking the life I really wanted, I couldn't have. And so I would act out. So I would have to live this perfect life on paper, the smartest kid, you know, right, doing right, all right. these things that, you know, society considers, okay, you are worthy once you do this, you accomplish these grades, you, you uh, have six figure income from a particular job, but you're not happy. Mm-hmm. And anytime that it keeps building and building, mm-hmm. you're going to act out. Yeah. And so I, my, I say my, what some would say drug of choice was sex, well, sex. whereas other people's it could be food, it could right. be alcohol, it could be shopping, it could be, shopping. It could be drugs. It and, could, and, yeah, and, and, everybody has their vice. And, and the scary thing is like when you look at sex versus other addictions, it's to what I call a silent killer. A person mm. who's on drugs, you can physically usually see it. Someone who's drinking alcohol, sometimes vodka will come through their pores. Mm-hmm. But sex addiction is a silent thing because you hide and you don't know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the last thing could be ultimate death, whereas you don't have things in place to help you get it. Mm. Luckily, more, let me say, thankfully, my religious background or spiritual background is what helped navigate me through that time because God, if he hadn't kept me, I could be just like, what's going on right now? The statistics of people dying Mm -hmm. of sexually transmitted diseases going on. Yeah. So um, when you would act out was it just because of the pressure or were you one of those ones like you just saw a piece of skin and you was like, oof, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gotta get, you know, let me it, get this out. Well, it, it depends, you know, where we are mentally in that space depends on, you know, we could be having a good day. Some people, you know, they act out because things are going great. Yeah, and this is what, what I've gotten used to is like, oh, this is, you if know, I could be honest, right? Quick, please this do. is the honesty hour. Um, I understand that Mm -hmm. because I have two vices, two things that I do when I'm feeling bad and when I'm feeling good or I've accomplished something I want to celebrate. Mm -hmm. I either want to go shopping or have sex. Mm -hmm. One of those two, if not both. And when I go shopping, like it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, that I'm buying clothes or jewelry or anything like that. Like I can just, you know, buy some things for the house. Right. So, you know, if I'm feeling bad, having a bad day, I need some things, I'll go shopping. That'll make me feel better. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'll call up one of my starting five and, you know, go bang <laughs> them out. And then, you know, I'm, I'm good. Um, so I, I can definitely, I can relate. It, it's not as, um, I guess I'm not on that, you know, same level. I have some sort of uh, self-control and I'm self-aware. And I think and I thank God for that. And and good thing that you are self-aware. Well, like you say, thank God for that. And that's sort of step one in the process, establishing your own relationship with God. And especially the African-American community, our community, like any other community, is based on the church. Yeah. And there's some great aspects of the church and some bad, bad aspects of the church. And if you aren't able to consciously be aware of what aspect is affecting you at a particular time, it can end up being detrimental to your health. Mm. And especially in terms of self-worth, because a lot of old church was fire and brimstone. God is a God of punishment. And I think that's why you see now a movement away from religion towards spirituality. Yeah. And how I define religion, religion says God's love is conditional. Mm-hmm. Where spirituality says God's love is unconditional. Yeah. I mean, religion is, as I've gotten older, I mean, it's just a form of control. It's just Absolutely. a form of control. It it, they it use has that been. Bible to control people. Yeah. Well, and, and that's my thing, especially in the black community. Now, you know, we have black Muslims, black Jews and all. 
I go towards a spiritual aspect of yeah. what is your personal relationship with God. Right. And because once you find figured that out, then things can start changing. Yeah. Because then you realize all this information that's being put and thrown towards you mm -hmm. might not be what you actually believe mm -hmm. or what God is telling you. Huh. You listen to Access Houston talking to author A.D. Burks, The Four Steps. A Practical Guide to Breaking the Addictive Cycle is available. Where can people get the book? You can get the book at Amazon or directly from the website, which is the four steps guide.com. That's the T H E, the number four steps guide.com. And the first chapter, like the other book, is online, which is step one. You can read the entire first chapter as well as the step one questions. And those questions are really detailed because we we want you to be able to utilize this and break your addictive cycle. Mm -hmm. And we asked you questions. And the biggest thing is it's a workbook that you are supposed to write and journal through because where I was when I wrote this book is not where I was now. My mm -hmm. relationship with my God then is not what it is now. Mm -hmm. My relationship with certain people is not what it is. And so if you can able to see your progression, you know, that helps you get to a better understanding of what's your addiction or what are you utilizing and what are your sources of pain? Oh, and man. So grab the book. It's available everywhere. And real quick, before we wrap up, uh, you have a nonprofit that's called It's OK to Wait. Yes. Um, now talk about uh, tell us about your nonprofit and why you started it. So the first step, you know, is relationship with God. Step two is abstinence from the substance or behavior. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was the culmination of it's OK to wait. Uh, HIV syphilis is running rampant in our community. Matter of fact, some quick stats is the rate of black males living with HIV in Houston is four times that of white men. What? Yes. That's crazy. Uh, you can go to uh, AIDSVU.org to find this information. The rate of Hispanic and Latino males is 1.2 times that of whites. And then people always think HIV with males, but let's look at women. The rate of black females living with HIV is 16.6 .6 times that of white females. And of Hispanic women is 2.5. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, especially that God was able to deliver me from sex addiction. I think we needed to start focusing on actually waiting and understanding our sexual health as well as our partner's sexual health so we can stop this transmission. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Man, thank you for coming on the program. That, thank you such for having an, me. Such an eye-opening uh, and educational conversation that we were having. Uh, pick up. Uh, Mr. Burks's book is called The Four Steps, A Practical Guide to Breaking the Addictive Cycle, available everywhere. And um, for more information on your nonprofit, where can people go? It's okay to wait. I-T-S-O-K, the number two, the letter W, and the letter eight. It's okay to wait dot com. It's okay to wait dot com. And then they can, of course, hit me on uh, Instagram at A.D. Burks Arthur, as well as The Four Steps Guide is on Instagram as well. Man, no doubt. Bro, thank you for coming on this morning. I appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Access Houston. We'll be back with more Access Houston on 97.9 The Box.